This is Texas, and with a massive area of more than 268,000 square miles, it is the largest state in the continental U.S. So large, in fact, that if you were to place whole nations inside of it, as if it were a storage locker, several legitimate nations, the Netherlands, Switzerland, Austria, Belgium, Hungary, the Czech Republic, Slovakia, and others would fit comfortably. Texas is also home to America's second largest population and economy, with at least 31 million residents and a gross state product of $2.3 trillion. Of course, California tops Texas in both metrics with the nation's biggest economy and its highest population, but California isn't growing like Texas, and Texas is growing like crazy. No, California's population and economic output have faltered in recent years, as famous Californian institutions and more than a million of its residents have already moved to Texas. And that's something that I've been meaning to address, because in one of my first videos here on this channel, I posed the question of if Texas is becoming California, ultimately arguing that the two states had become more similar than ever before. And I stand by that conclusion, mostly, but if you look at how Texas is trending in business, population, and culture, those similarities are largely limited to the pitfalls of overpopulation and diseconomies of scale. And it's increasingly clear that immense growth isn't changing what the Lone Star State stands for or how it functions. So while some states, even ones half the size of Texas, often seem to have this effect where different portions of the state feel like entirely different places, something you can see in California, where West Coast cities feel nothing like small mountain towns or agriculture-based counties, Texas, for all its sprawling landmass and varied geography with the Chihuahuan Desert, the Lower Rio Grande Valley, and the Central Hill Country, mostly just feels like Texas. Maybe that's because Texas was once its own country, or the strong culture there, based on individualism and traditional values. But I would argue that it's mostly due to Texas's unique approach to capitalism, and the state's almost symbiotic relationship with the oil industry. See, oil and gas have been instrumental in transforming Texas from a Wild West Railroad pass-through into a powerhouse state with an ever-growing economy and population. And Texas isn't just an oil state either, it has meaningful interests in agriculture, healthcare, and technology. However, the state is home to about 43% of all U.S. crude oil production, with some reports having the Texas oil and gas sector is making up nearly 35% of the state's total economic output, and 347,000 Texans work directly in in the oil industry there with an average annual wage of almost $140,000. So while Texas, and especially Austin and Dallas, have attracted several important silicon and capital funding businesses from California in recent years, the state itself, certainly over the past century or so, has been built off the liquid treasures that lay beneath its surface. And it was crude oil that first brought Texas, from its humble roots, as a state dependent on cotton and cattle, into a real center for wealth and prosperity, as black gold continues to fuel all of the state's booms and busts, to a point where, in 2017, a columnist for The New Yorker wrote, Now that oil prices have stabilized, Texas's economy is robust again. Now, the history of Texas petroleum is as fascinating and important a subject as you will find in the state that brought us the early formation of NASA, Nolan Ryan, Janis Joplin, Dell Computers, and Whole Foods. This week marked a historic milestone with the beginning of the modern age of oil here in the Lone Star State. It all started when Spanish explorers discovered bits of oil floating around in the Galveston Bay back in 1543. But the actual Texas oil boom came about 360 years later, with the eruption of the Spindle Drop Gusher in 1901. Then, offshore drilling started seven years later in the Galveston Bay. But somewhere between the OPEC oil crisis of 1973 and the WTI hitting an all-time high of $147 in 2008, the oil industry captured the state of Texas in a way that few businesses, or even business sectors, have ever been able to before or since. So saying that Texas dominates oil and gas isn't exactly correct, because in reality, I would argue that the oil industry is really the one in charge. See, Texas is known for being business friendly, for its limited regulations and low taxes, and Texas oil has had a significant hand in shaping that policy framework. With oil being foundational to the state's bottom line, paying out $24.7 billion in state and local taxes in 2022 alone, providing the state with an average of $67 million a day in essential public funding. That's why the state representative Phil King recently said that Texas oil is the lifeblood of the Texas economy. And that's how the $24.7 billion big oil paid Texas in 2022 really represented a major discount when compared to its revenue and profits. 
Texas lawmakers also consistently pass legislation in favor of its biggest oil and gas producers, which is likely, at least in part, a result of the many millions of dollars the Texas leadership receives from its oil and gas industry every year. That's to say the Texas oil industry isn't just important to the state's GSP, a top employer and foundational state funding source, it's also a major funding source for many of Texas's elected officials. And while there are other very serious concerns to be considered when looking at big oil's stronghold on the state, such as increasingly significant environmental dangers, worsening public health concerns, and a real potential for failed safety protocols, the oil market, which is at best strongly cyclical, is built on limited, expensive, and environmentally concerning resources, and Texas is built on the oil businesses that make up that marketplace. Thick black smoke at one point was so large it could be detected on weather radar. The forecast suggests 2020 will go down in history as the final point of no return for the global oil industry, a date to which we will look back and remember how the production of oil, as well as other fossil fuels like gas and coal, underwent a slow but inexorable and largely irreversible decline. That's what Vice wrote on August 26, 2020, as oil prices plummeted into a multi-decade low point where oil futures were trending in the negative. But that was three years and at least a couple global crises ago. And by March of 2020, crude oil prices had already spiked to a new 13-year high. That isn't a nod to big oil or an endorsement for the longevity of its business practices. No, there are countless long-term headwinds in regards to the usefulness of oil in the future. It's just one recent example of the harsh boom or bust cycles there. The highs are always really high, but the lows, well, they're downright dreadful. Especially for a state that, for all its famous monikers about size and freedom, is more known for its dependence on oil than anything else. Again, the Texas economy isn't completely dependent on oil, that may have been the case a few decades ago, but today, Texas has somewhat diversified, with venture capital in Dallas, the Silicon Hills of Austin, and advanced manufacturing in San Antonio. But Texas, and especially its biggest city of Houston, remain deeply tied to an industry that is on the clock. And if Texas is the American capital of oil and gas, then Houston is Texas's Texas. So the euphoria of the booms and the pain of the busts can be felt there more so than probably any place outside the Middle East. And when oil growth slows down like it did in 2016 and 2020, it isn't just workers being sent home from offshore rigs. The city streets of America's fourth most populous city become visibly less congested, offices empty up, home sales slow down, and the wealthy owner class there, well, let's just say it might be Ruth Chris instead of Vivian Anthony's when the times are lean. And that should be worrisome, to see a state at the size and scale of Texas so overly reliant on an industry that can go from boom to bane in an instant.